Meghan Markle's bestie, Omed Scobie, wrote a new book exposing the royal family. He was supposed to not mention those alleged royal racists, but a Dutch translation has now revealed both. He's claiming a translation error. How truthful is he being? Well, we got Black Belt Barrister here to break it all down. Let's see how much trouble this lick spittle is going to get in. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signer. Guys, this is a kind of a big deal because if the ramifications here are what I think they are, this is going to open a huge legal battle potentially to expose both Meghan and Harry and their involvement in this book that they say they're not involved in. Danny, always good to have you here, sir. How you doing, man? Very good. Thanks for having me back. If folks don't follow the Black Belt Barrister, you are missing out on some fantastic stuff. Make sure you go over to his channel and uh, follow there. He also got Black Belt Secrets. Wonderful content. I'm so glad we have you back because I've been teasing this and hyping this. I, I need to get your uh, thoughts here because in, the, in America, right, we have freedom of speech. We can sort of say these things and get away with things a lot easier. However, out by you, it's a lot harder. And just for full recap so people understand if you're just tuning in this story, check out our coverage over on Popcorn Palace, etc. But the Dutch version of this book, which I'm calling WAH Part 2 because I really do believe Meghan and Harry were very involved, but it's written by this fellow, Omid Scobie. Uh, and the Dutch version has now been pulled off the shelves as two passages from the book uh, show that it was clearly a, a early version of the book where they uh, they announce that, uh, imply that both King, that King Charles is one of the alleged racists. And then this morning we're learning a second passage alleges that it was not only the King, but also the Princess of Wales that took part in these conversations about Archie's skin color. Now, again, what's, fr what's frustrating about all this is now no one's going to really understand what this means. It just means Megan is saying and implying that there were these alleged conversations about Archie's skin color. They even changed it later to unconscious bias, not racism. But now, Daniel, we know what this means. A lot of people are just going to now instantly call both of these two people, the King of England and the Princess of Wales, racist because it's now leaked in this weird, weaselly, sneaky way. Now, before we get to the ramifications, can you verify Omid says it was illegal to release these names in the UK. Can you explain that first before we even get to, is he now in trouble for doing it through the Dutch version? Explain to me sort of the rules out there. Well, very simply, this is going to be defamation because to make any kind of allegation which has a criminal aspect to it is sort of de facto defamatory. Because if if you were to say, you, you, you can't just say someone, let's take fraud. You can't just say this, I think this guy is a fraud, for example, without any evidence and, and everything else. Even if it's just your opinion, you can't just say, in my opinion, that he's a fraudster. That would be defam defamatory. You'd have to have some um, underlying basis to it. And so that's the fallout from this. Uh, whether and, and that's why he was saying that it, he couldn't release them in the UK and then being released in the Dutch version. Um, and then it been somewhat debunked as to a translation error. I mean, names named in a book can't really be chalked up to a translation error. It's either uh, the, the difficulty will be is who who's done it is, is going to be the big question. Meaning like the publisher, the editor, Omid, like it'll fall down to like, how did this version get out? Because I actually, I want you to see Absolutely. his excuse here. So here's what he's said on the record. And you tell me this is him on the Dutch TV responding to this. But the book's available in a number of languages. And unfortunately, I can't speak Dutch. So I haven't seen the copy for myself. But if there have been any translation errors, I'm sure the publisher's got it under control. For me, I edited and wrote the English version. There's never been a version that I've produced that has names in it. Very key, as I noticed, his word mm -hmm. the choice there, there's never been a version I've produced, right? It does seem like immediately he's pushing the blame to, someone must have produced an older version. Uh, what are your thoughts on his comments there? Uh, well, ex uh, my thoughts exactly. He's uh, straight out of the gate he's trying to exculpate himself from the situation doesn't speak dutch didn't see the version and didn't have any involvement in doing that version so not me is what he's saying so as i said the big question will be how did the names get in there i i don't think anyone will really believe that it's a, a pure translation error he's saying if there were translation errors so i don't know whether by extension the the, the questions here will be well 
translation from what? How did the names get translated from whatever he's given them in the first place, from notes, from the books, the drafts, whatever? How did names come out of that if they weren't in the original material? If they right, were, so can he get punished because he wrote the original material, even if the publisher or the editor put the wrong one out, they didn't write the defamatory words, right? That's where this is going to become a slippery slope. Can he be responsible for something he wrote that got accidentally released? This is what he's going to have to argue. He's going to have to argue that it's it's not his fault and he's not caught up in the wrongdoing of it. And ultimately, he didn't publish it is what he's going to argue, likely, if there's, if there's a claim, which we'll come on to whether there'll be a claim uh, in a minute. But he's going to have to argue that he's not done any wrongdoing. And so he's flatly laying the blame elsewhere. And with those publishers, what are they going to say? Well, that's another, that's another question entirely. But if he's, if he is caught up in it and we, we have in England and Wales, we have disclosure, you have discovery. It's essentially what some people think with these scenarios is you, you can keep back damaging material and that's not how it works. If you are sued for something, you have a duty of disclosure to say, well, this is all the material that I have that either supports my case or your case. And uh, some of it you have control of, some of it you don't have control of, and you cre essentially create a list of that material. And within that material, there's gonna be notes, there's going to be probably recordings, interview recordings, all sorts of stuff that will be pieced together to see whether or not he's caught up in the wrongdoing. Now, by saying that he doesn't speak Dutch and he didn't have involvement in the book, he's right. I, to me, it sounds planned. It doesn't sound reactionary. It sounds that it was planned. I mean, if you have a book that trans translated, obviously you have a, a lot of different people involved in this, but all of that is planned. I know mm -hmm. lots of people and myself, I've spoken to, and I've even advised publishers, authors on different things, on copyright issues, def defamation issues, and all that sort of stuff. There's a huge team, there's a huge process that happens, and very little of it is by accident. And so before anything is actually printed, there are so many steps along the way and checks and balances. Somebody would have seen it and si essentially signed off on it before right. it went print. So well, it's, and, it's and that, as many are asking here, like, yeah, how, how can this really be an error? How hard this is to believe? This is sort of the, mm. the headlines today. And it's true because he's saying he never published a version, but it seems clear he wrote a version. So that begs the question, now that it's implicating King Charles, Princess of Wales, like obviously big two huge names, uh, powerful names, will there be a a you know a, a lawsuit on this? Will they attempt to file this? And I and I imagine in doing so, right, Omid, Meghan, Harry, all must be sweating a little bit and feeling a little bit nervous because in that process they'll have to answer this question: of, Well, did he write it? Where did he get it from? How did it get published? Would all those answers get uh, be thought you know sought out after? Well, there's two questions, well, three questions there. First of all, is is there a claim possible? Uh, secondly, is a claim likely? And thirdly, who would be involved in the claim? Now, Harry and Meghan, uh, unless they actually had a, a real involvement in the writing, which I don't think is the case, then they would just be third parties to any potential claim, so in reverse order. Sorry, is but it, even if they are the, the source of... The royal racists. If they are, I mean, if if they are the source of the information, they will be third parties unless they are directly sued for it. And so, if if it's let's say if it's a defamation claim, it will be well, who who's made the defamatory statement or the the statement that they claim is defamatory, and then you have a, a decision as to what's the ordinary meaning of that, and then is it defamatory and so on. But who's made it? Who's published it? And then anyone else that's involved as a third party. Uh, might might well be called upon. We've we've been Got it. in that block before, so a claim is possible because it is inherently defamatory to say that you know someone is racist or holds racist views. And there's there's another distinction as well that Harry's made a number of times, which I disagree with, and I know others disagree with the distinction between unconscious bias and racism. I'll we'll come back to that. But um, as to is a claim possible? Yes, because any statement like that is inherently defamatory. Is it likely? Well, the royal family 
have had a long-standing tradition of you know never complain and never explain which queen was famous for just keep the status quo and uh, you know in other words opening your mouth gets you into more trouble so it, you, know, you won't convince certain people and you just make matters worse so that's what she always did and a lot of people respect that um, harry's not necessarily taken uh, that approach right <laughs> and, and even prince William's been been pushed after the interview, the big Oprah interview, was pushed by reporters. And I thought it was out of frustration. He said, and I quote, you know, we are very much not a racist family. And frankly, I, I believe that. I think that was a genuine statement made out of frustration in response to that interview where they would not normally respond. But it was out of frustration to clarify, no, this is not who we are. So, but would would they push a claim? Probably not. And I think that is where this bet has been hedged with, you know, if if it if it has been done deliberately, I'm choosing words very carefully. If it has been done to get it leaked, then it's been done very cleverly in such a way that makes it as difficult as possible to bring any claim, hmm. i.e., through the Dutch version, and somehow it gets out. But I just I can't see it being an error. It's maybe at best it's been put in when it should not have been put in into the Dutch version. Who knows? Either way, you know, and, and by the way, I'm sure everyone watching absolutely knows that this is a completely unproven allegation in any event. It's right. at best, it is just names dropped in for something very vague, which falls back very loosely to the interview in the comments that Megan made in that interview, which even them of themselves, even if you take it word for word and a literal meaning, even the conversation that she describes would not in, in and of itself be racist. So just to touch on that for a moment, it, to discuss what someone's skin color is likely to be, or even how dark it's going to be in the way that she put it, of an unborn child, is not inherently racist, even to say that there are concerns about it. Now, I've seen lots of comments in response to actually one or two videos I did about this subject. I aired my views because my son's mixed race. So I aired my views on this. And some people said, yes, having concerns might well be racist. Well, it, it might, depending on how it's put across and depending on the context. And without the context, you cannot understand. But if you make the statement that leave somebody with the impression that they are racist as a result of that statement. It's defamatory because they don't have the benefit of the context. If mm. it had the full context, so let's say the book said, this was the context of the conversation. This is what was said. This is how it was said. And this is who said it. Then you as the reader have got the whole context and you can digest that for yourself. So my argument for that is if it was said the way that they said it, then concerns might be raised as to how they might be treated. They might be treated negatively. They might be viewed negatively. That isn't racist. That's a genuine concern. So I might say, on behalf of my, my own family, we might show concern if my son were treated differently at school because of those things. That's not racist. It's a conversation. So that's the bit that, that really concerned me, no pun intended. Right. But yeah. Well, I mean, that's interesting because it, as we're as, as we wrap it up too, like it, it seems clear he obviously writ, wrote unless someone faked a chapter mm -hmm. that they then slid in that Obin was Obi was not uh, involved in. It does seem quite clear he wrote a version where he was going to name them either legally or the editors probably pulled it. It mm -hmm. was then translated in this book. Now, the question is, did that actually was that actually an accident where an earlier version of the, the book went out by accident? Seems very unlikely given how the publishing process works and mm. whatnot. Uh, but uh, doing this move, it does seem like it is very sneaky, weaselly, and would parlay into what they've done in the past. I don't think it's going to actually help him to think the way he thinks it is. Uh, I guess to wrap up, though, yes, they have a case here, but you think unlikely they will do it probably to get more to avoid more attention to it. What do you think they we, they would need to see? from the public or so somewhere for them to actually pursue this? It's a difficult question because it is, it is what it is. I mean, it's now, I, I, 
it's out in the public domain, but I think newspapers will avoid um, talking too much about it for the same reasons that he uh, accepted that he wouldn't publish it in the UK, which proves that he gave it some thought at least. So it's difficult to say. I mean, what, what would trigger what would trigger a claim? I don't know. Uh, I th I think they'll be very upset by it, but I don't know what they will do about it. I think there'll be a fallout, further fallout between them. Yeah. Uh, there's there's continuous upset in 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 the family, and it's as a result of things like this. And this and just, could be the end game, right? Where they finally we named it, we called you, we warned you. I mean, are you yeah. surprised that Meghan and Harry haven't disavowed this book and the relationship? To Omid, I mean, that would seem like such a no-brainer thing to do to distance would, themselves, yeah, especially absolutely. as it happened. Yeah, damage control. That would be sensible. It would it would be sensible uh, if they, you know, if they do condemn this and disavow it, that it would be sensible to come out and say, "We didn't say that. You know, we didn't approve that. We didn't know about that." Um, and again, you know, whether pe people believe it or not, it would be sensible to do that. Um, but just to, yeah, just touching on the, the one point. I'd said I'd come back to um, a very interesting piece by Megan Tinsley, the Presidential Fellow for Ethnicity and Inequalities at the University of Manchester. For those that want to go and have a look, you'll find it, um, where Harry was making a distinction between unconscious bias, saying that it is not racism and that the two are very different. I disagree with that, and so does um, Megan Tinsley. There's an interesting article about that. And essentially, that just means you're treating someone less favorably through an unconscious bias, through one or two thought processes. And that's not really any different to racism. If you treat somebody less favorably because of one reason or another that's linked to race or any other kind of protected characteristic, it is some kind of ism. So I, I don't I don't buy that. And of course, I'm referring to Harry's comments uh, promoting um, his, his own ventures where he did the interview, where he backtracked a little bit and yeah. tried to say that, you know, Megan, no, Meg, you know, Megan, did, did she say that they were racist? And well, what she said in the Oprah interview clearly implied to most people that that's what she was saying. And Harry then tried to backtrack it. So it's, it's all very wrong. None of it should have been said, obviously. And it's going to leave people with a very sour taste, not least of which the raw. When you, and when you say none of it should be said, you're saying just the revelation here in this book, right? I mean, that that's where you're, is that ultimately you, you, does this book to, and, and the connection to Megan Harry leave you a bad taste in your mouth over them? Well, obviously everything in, in, in this book should not have been said that's d defamatory and certainly un, unproven. I mean, I did a video just recently to say that, None of this can really be taken seriously unless it's fully particularized. But if you do that, you better be right, because it is obviously then um, at risk of a defamation claim, isn't it? If you yeah. if you make a bold statement about somebody, you are obviously open to a claim. If it's wrong and you have to prove that it's right, obviously one of the defense to uh, defamation is that it's the truth or it's an opinion based on some real credible fact. You can't just give an opinion just for the sake of it. It has to be based on something, or it can be the truth, or we we, we should say substantially true. Um, but I don't think this should have been said, and as I say, unless it's fully particularized. If something really happens, really bad happens, and you can show it and prove it, and you give full details about it, then fine if that's what you want to do. But you are at risk of the claim, but you can, as long as you feel that you can prove that it was true. But here, I just feel that this this is painting a family in a bad light and without giving enough detail and also probably banking on that they won't come out publicly to defend it because that often makes things worse. It's the Streisand effect, isn't it? <sighs> Yep. Well said. If you want more uh, takes on this legal analysis and more, check out Black Belt Barrister, his other channel, Black Belt Secrets, both available on YouTube. Look them up. Go get them. Always worthy. Always a pleasure to have you, sir. Love having you here. Hope to have you back soon. I'll be back on yours anytime you need us. What do you think, guys? Are you worried? Are you frustrated? Should we just laugh it off like AI Princess Catherine here? Uh, or are you as shocked as AI Prince uh, King Charles here? Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Either way, I think Scobie 
got what he want, but I don't think he's going to actually get what he wants. I think this is going to hurt him more, especially his credibility. So perhaps this is his end game. What do you think's next? I want to hear your thoughts down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on mine and Black Belt's channels. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more here on Popcorn Planet.